Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, and welcome to part two of three in a series of videos I've been doing on how to code your own CCTV monitoring software. If you missed part one, this is probably going to make no sense to you, so you should probably go back and watch that now. In part one, we created the framework for a CCTV monitoring application where we actually got up to four video feeds displaying on the screen at one time, but we couldn't control them, we couldn't put display text over the top of them, we had no way to make them go full screen, and that's where part two comes in. Today we're going to work on the control interface. You can see whether or not uh, windows can be full screen or minimized and we put some overlay text and some other things. So let's get going. How could we solve this overlay issue? Well, one is we could have done the whole lot in WinForms. Um, could have written the overlay controls in WinForms. It would have got a bit icky when we wanted to do transparency and things like that was good. There'd been a lot more code involved to just get something really simple on there. Uh, the other thing I said, we could capture the VLC window, make it borderless and embed it. Mm, again, it's not great. Plus, we've got to have a control again over the top. So again, it's all just getting a bit icky. Or we could have actually taken the raw libvlc rather than the libvlc.net, and I could have written the code there to take it, got the frame by frame, and rendered it straight into a WPF context. But all of that is going to take time, and this was about being quick. So... <coughs> I came up with a really terrible idea. Why don't we have two windows? Yeah, bear with me. One with the video feed and one with the overlay text. I make this one a transparent background. And as long as they match the same size and dimensions, I've then got a different window on top of it that looks like it's part of the same thing. Other than the fact that this is just not how you're supposed to write a program, um, and it's terrible for like alt tabbing to it and stuff, you'll see two versions of the window and actually do other stuff to work around. It's really bad from an object-oriented perspective. Because what we're going to have is two windows that rely on each other. So we break all sense of good object-oriented design. Do not do this in a commercial project. Do one of the long-winded options and rewrite it. However, for a quick dirty hack at home, this will do the trick. So, although this is terrible from an object-oriented perspective, this is pretty good when it comes to dirty hacks. So, time for us to create a new window. So we right-click on the project, and we go Add. And we go new item, select window brackets WPF, and instead of window one, we are going to call this control window.xaml. Press enter, we get another window that's created for us. And what I'm going to do on this one is give it the title of CCTV monitor. Um, Going to go for the same things again. So I'm going to go for the resize mode is can resize, window style is none. Let's see, just get this matched to the other one for now. Window state is normal. And I'm going to create two event handlers on this that we'll use later. One I'm going to create loaded, we'll let it have the default name for now. The other is closing, which is when the window closes. Going to go into those by pressing F12 to get to the code. Going to rename that to um, on window closing. I'm actually going to share that code with the other window in a minute. This way it gets a bit messy for our perspective. So I've got it on window closing, just on window closing, so I know the difference between it. And I'm going to call that one on loaded again. I'm going to stick these in a region called event handlers. Now I'm just going to put my generic comments that I always have for absolutely everything on these two event handlers, just so we've got them documented. So then we need to actually do something on the UI. So in here we've got a grid. Again, we need it to be a two by two. So I'm going to go back to the video stream window and I'm going to copy the row and column definitions that we've got on there. This time, I'm not going to say the stuff isn't focusable because this is the control window where we want to be able to click on things. And then I'm going to put two text blocks for each feed. So we're going to have two different types of text. So if I can just go back to my running code. So if we go back to the running code, you will see that for each camera feed, there is the title of the camera and there is also a status text. So we've got one, two, three, four five 
six, seven, eight, although the status speed is empty with working streams. So that's good. So what we're gonna do here then, so what we're gonna do here is add in our text blocks for our labels. So we're gonna go text block, grid.row is zero, grid.column is zero. We're gonna give the, this one a margin of five, horizontally align it in the center, vertically align it in the center, We're going to put the foreground of the text white. We're going to call it error label one, and we're going to make its font size 20. So if I just for a minute make the background of this black, make it red because we're going to turn it off in a minute. And if I now put some text here, ta da! You'll see that we've said this one is on the grid row zero, grid column zero, which is here, and it's aligned horizontally and vertically in the center. Now that's horizontally and vertically within that part of the grid. If I had said that it was grid dot row span is two, so it spanned two rows, it would go horizontally and vertically in there. If I made it grid dot column span is two and row span two, it would be center of the whole thing. If I made it just a column span, there you are. So the alignments refer to within its available space. We can remove the text that says ta-da for now. Okay, we're gonna put the other one in, just gonna paste this one in. And this one is the actual head of the camera that gives it its name. So in this case, this is gonna be the top left one, so we call this one camera one. We're gonna do a copy paste job, put our four that we care about. So again, these two go on the second row, which is called P1. These two go in the second column as to those two. Going to rename our everything from ones, twos, threes, fours, four, three, two. Bang! We've now got our basic layout done and available for us. So there's a couple of things missing. One is we can't tick these to make them bigger at the moment or really do anything. Um, and we've obviously got red background. Let's go into the red background now. Ooh, it's white. That's the default background. We'll get onto that in a minute as well. <clears throat> the other thing, I'll leave the red one on for now, is that on where we talk about clicking them, because we've made these labels really big, um, the whole thing you'd think you could click anywhere on it. Well, actually, we can't click anywhere on it. Um, it's quite clever in some ways, WPF, and it goes, if there's a transparent part that's completely transparent on a text label and you click me, then I actually want to send the click event to what's behind it because clearly the user isn't clicking on invisibility, the user is clicking on something. Oh, that's lovely. I could put a button behind it and still click it. Unfortunately, in this really weird, bad design scenario, that's not what we want to do. So we need to actually give it a background that isn't transparent for these ones. So I'm going to give it a background that is hashtag, hashtag, oh my God, I've been taken by Twitter. Oh one, oh oh, oh oh, oh oh. Now, let's take off the oh one. It's got a black background suddenly. So that's RGB, so a standard web color code. Now at the start of it, you've also got A, which is the alpha channel. If I do FF, oh oh, 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 notice it stays black. If I do CC, you'll notice it's faded through and actually that's setting the transparency of it. I go that down to 6.6, 6, it's gone even lighter. If I get that down to 1.1, 1, 1, it's gone even lighter. If I get that down to 0.0, 0, the background is transparent. We're back to the same situation we were to start with. The click doesn't work for it. If I have set it to 0, 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then the software goes, oh, it's not transparent, so I get the click. But there is no user on this planet who's going to be able to see that 1 255th of a percent of transparency. Pop that on all of them. Then I might as well set up my event handlers on these as well so that we can click them in a minute. Do, we'll do a new event handler. We are just gonna go into that, rename it to something nice. Camera area on mouse left button click, why not? And then copy paste that to all of our labels so that all of them are gonna run the same code if they're clicked. So at this point, we've set up this screen pretty much apart from it's got a red background at the moment. So let's run it and see what, see what happens. Now, what would you expect? No change. Why is that? Well, we haven't actually told it to show this window. So if we stop our code running, 
all we need to do is tell our stream window to show the control window. So if we go to the constructor where everything begins, within here, we can go create the control window, we can go to control window, control window, equals the new control window, we can do control window dot show, and then we want to give the control window focus, so it's the one that's on top, so we can go control window dot activate. Now, thing to note here, only windows are dot activate, everything else is dot focus. Don't know why. We also are later on going to need to access this control window. So what I'm going to do is create a member variable in the class for the control window. And within the constructor, I'm just going to store that. All that means is that we can access this control window later. So when an error happens, we're going to be able to tell the control window to display the error. Okay. So now if we run it, we've got our red background. Ooh, that's nice, but we don't want a red background with both of those. So go back to our control window. What we can do now is change our background from red to transparent. Looks good. We've got transparency going on there. We run it again. Huh, okay. Well, it's got a black background, which isn't what I wanted. So that's not a good thing. Hmm, that's strange. Now, it turns out you want a transparent background, despite setting the background as transparent, you also need to set another property called allows transparency to be true. Again, one of those weird quirks, all program languages have weird quirks. Run it again. Now we have, ta-da, this magical window. We can't do a lot with it, we can't really resize it, it's got no borders. Um, but if I, for now, just drag this window to kind of cover it and then click there. You'll notice it appears as an overlay. We now have text above our images, which is what we wanted. Brilliant. If we stop that. Um, actually, before we stop that, if we go back, the other thing to notice, if you look in my taskbar, it's got two windows. One is the video feed and one is the text feed. Bang, 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 bang. We only want one of those again. So there's something else we can do here. We can turn, do another setting, which is show in task by false on the overlay window. Then if we run it again, this time you've only got the one, which is for the CCTV window. All right, we stop that. So now we're in pretty good state to start writing code for our control window as well. So we go and have a look in our code. Do what we did before, remove all of the unused things we're not using in the header. Let's move our camera area left button down into our event handler logic and give that a nice comment as well. Then what we're going to want to do within here, again, if we do the original constructors, So we are nice and tidy. So again, like we did on the other one, we're going to want to store a few things here. We're going to programmatically, because we haven't got view models and we're being dirty here, sorry about this, we're going to want an easy way to be able to tie the camera number back to a specific UI control without checking through and numbering everything. So we're going to do that by having a couple of storage things at class level, and we are actually going to store the text box in arrays of error labels and name labels. Control dot to import we want to for that. And then within our constructor, all we're going to do is once we've created the hooks of the XAML, we're going to just set create two arrays hooking up for the four error labels and the four name labels. That means that now we know the first item in the name labels array is name label camera one, and the same for the error label one. That means we can numerically always know which UI elements one refer to, which is going to be handy in this case since this isn't the most beautiful of code ways to do this. And finally, what we actually need to do is have a way to access the CCTV video feed as well, because we need to, when we click on it in this window, tell the other window to make the video feed big. This is where it gets icky from an OO perspective. The easiest way to do that is to add a parameter into the constructor for the video stream window. Uh, video stream window. Update our comment. Um, the video stream window that this control window is controlling. And then again, we're going to want to have 
somewhere for us to store that. All we need to do then is store our video stream window. So we store the video stream window for later use. At least for video stream window is video stream window. And while we're at it, we're going to want to hook up to a couple of events on the video stream window. Now, what we want to do, we want to know if that window is shut so that we can shut this window as well. And also, we are going to want to attach to if that window ever gets focused so that we can take focus back. Because remember, the labels always need to be on top. So we can go uh, underscore video stream dot closing plus equals for an event handler and tab it out. And we're going to rename that one to on. Uh, this is where, as I said earlier on, we've already got one. So we're going to use on window closing, which we've already got. It can share the exact same code whether we close this window or the main window then. It doesn't matter which one we close. We want the app to terminate both windows simultaneously. And then we can do video stream window dot activated. So if it gets focused plus equals how to complete that, we're going to rename that one to main window on activated. And then we give that one a comment and move that also into our event handler section. And again, for now, we are just going to leave that one blank. And then what we might as well do at this point is actually write a bit of code in these bits. So we need to say that when the main window is activated, our window should be activated instead. That's easy. We just call this window's activate method, which should then immediately overwrite the activate that's happening on the main window. And the other thing we were going to do is make sure that when either window is closed, the whole application shuts down. Otherwise, we'll just lose one of the two windows. So we just put in application.current to get access to the singleton current object of application called the shutdown method on it. You could close both windows and let it close down, but this forces the whole app main and everything shut down gracefully. So we close one window, both will go. Great. Now, if we try and build now, error. Why well, is an error? Well, we modified our constructor. Uh, here, take a parameter to a video stream window, but we didn't modify our video stream window when it creates it to pass in itself. So all we do in our video stream window, where we're creating the control window, we now pass in a parameter of this, which means it passes itself to the control window. And at this point, we should be able to compile it again. And then finally, where we've got our on-click event button, if we can just for now debug it, and we'll just do a message box dot show. I just click. We'll put some real code in there in a minute, and we should now be able to run this. Again, we've got these two feeds. We haven't set the locations up quite right yet, so you've got this really annoying fact of. Now, you'll notice that if I try and now move anything or do this window, it won't let me do it. I can no longer. Put it behind so that's working and if i click on one of those it says i was clicked if i click anywhere on that blob it says i was clicked if i just press alt f4 to close a single window you'll notice both of them go excellent all that worked so just to prove a point about the transparency if i we've just proved that we can click on it and it works if we make the whole thing transparent so we just say oh, 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 oh. whack f5 now if we click on it works if i click on the text doesn't work if I just click on the empty area. But for those that have got uh, transparency you can't see, but still transparent, it does. So that's why we have that stupid thing where we have to have 01. Ooh, 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 ooh. Always fun to say though. So at this point, now we need to actually start creating a couple of other bits. So I'm finding it really annoying that the windows aren't lined up. We want them on top of each other. And we've already put in the config which window we want it to be displayed on. So when we display it, we want it to be displayed full screen on a particular window. And we want both windows to be on the same physical monitor, both of them full screen, both of them in the same location. So to do that, we want to share some code between both of them. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it Window Helper. So class, type in the name of it, call this one windowhelper.cs. Going to make this an internal static class. Now, internal means it's only accessible within this application if we share the assembly. And static means we're not going to create instances of it. We are literally just going to call a single static method on it because this is going to be one just reusable chunk of code that has no relevance to an object. Again, dirty and quick. I suppose what we could have done is created a base window object, descend both the windows from that window object, and then in there have the shared code. 
that's the good OO way to do that, guys. This is not OO programming 101. Ignoring that, we're going to create a static method. Let's just put a comment on here. Uh, then we are going to create a new method. And we are going to call this window, uh, I'm going to put a pub actually, I'm going to call it an internal static void. I'm going to call it move to assigned monitor window. And actually, I'm going to make a slight change here for what I was planning on doing. First of all, we're going to sort that window really quickly now. I'm going to make this a... We're going to, we're going to take advantage of my laziness in doing a static class and show you one of uh, C Sharp's nice features, which is extension classes. So we're going to make this add a method to the window itself. So you create a static class, but then the first parameter of your methods should have the, this keyword in front of it. And then now, with any window, I can just do my window.move to assigned monitor. Nice. My laziness paid off. Didn't plan that, actually. Okay. So, laziness paid off. We will stick a comment on there. And then what we need to do, first of all, is get the monitor number out of our config file. So we know from the configuration manager bit before, that's how we put the setting out of the configuration man uh, manager. Again, red squiggly with the line, we'll do our normal bits. But our setting here is a string and we want numbers. If I do in monitor number is that, we're gonna get an error. Hmm. So then we need to tell it to convert that into a number. So we're gonna do in dot pass this. Now, what I probably should do here is check it's not null or empty, then do a try pass if it fails through a nice error message. In this case, I'm just going to go with it. Once we've got our monitor number, what we need to do then is get access to the um, array of all of the different monitors that we've got. And that is, and we then need to get access to the monitor. We're going to put it on so we know where it is on screen. So we're going to go screen, screen equals screen dot all screens. And then the number we pulled out. Now this screen is actually in system WinForms. So even if you're not doing WinForms integration, but using WPF and you want to know about monitors, you need WinForms. Why they haven't fixed that in 10 years, don't know. Anyway, using system Windows Forms, we've then got access to our screen. And then it really is as simple as going window, the left position of the window we're moving is equal to the screen dot, bounds dot left. And then we do the same with top, we do the same with width, we do the same with Right, Ooh. and we've got a typo, that's the capital S for screen. And finally, you know when we originally set this up, we had our window state was uh, normal and our window size was that you could resize it. Once we've actually got there and we've maximized it, put it in the right place, we then want to go, actually, you, it's now maximized and you can't resize it. Get rid of all of the other bits we don't need up here. And that's our window helper class done. And what we need to do is make sure that our control window, when it's loaded, moves there. So we added our loaded event. So if we go into there, whack F7, then all we need to do is in on loaded, put in, move to assign monitor. Sorry, this dot move to assign monitor. If it's an extension method on itself, you have to put the this keyword in it. If it's just a method in itself, you don't. And then if it hadn't been an extension method, we'd have had to do something like window helper dot move to a time monitor this, but which still works. But because it's an extension method, we can just do this dot move to assign monitor, and we could do main window, or for a video stream window dot move to assign monitor as well. But within the video stream window, we are going to do the same thing. Again, it's just going to be in its loaded method. So we go into video stream window, we go into the on loaded, do, do, do. and the very first thing, or very last thing we're gonna do is put it on the create monitor. So now, if I press start, you'll notice it quickly appeared on this monitor and then it vanished. Where did it vanish to? Well, it's over here now. This is starting to look a lot like the finished version of the application apart from we just have these annoying message boxes for now, and we don't have any error text there. And that's the end of part two. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We got almost all of the application finished today. The only thing we've got left to do is hook up some resize events, and there's some bits around retries and error handling and status messages, but we can do that all next time. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video. If so, leave me some comments below or hit like. If you didn't like it or you've got any other feedback, then I'd love to hear it as well. You can get to contact me, Guy Robot TV, on Facebook and Twitter. And in the meantime, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.